Ubuntu is an operating system that inherits all the appearance and functionality of Microsoft Windows with the functionality of Ubuntu Linux. It's essentially a custom skin for Ubuntu that makes it look and feel more like Windows, complete with the start menu, taskbar, and familiar icons. Ubuntu was created for users who are comfortable with Windows but want to try out Linux without having to learn a completely new interface. Their website mentions it as compatible with Windows applications. You can run .exe and .msi applications. It is faster and more secure, less prone to viruses and crashes compared to Windows installed on the same hardware. This is also true for all Linux distros in general. Because it is developed using the Ubuntu operating system as a base, you have a fast, secure, and very efficient system. With Ubuntu, you will also be able to run Microsoft Windows and Android applications via Toybox or Raydroid. This is a functionality that's available on any Linux distro by using Wine. Wine translates Windows API calls that allows integration of Windows applications into Linux. There is a version that looks like Windows 11 that's called Windows Ubuntu 11 Plasma and a version that looks like Windows 10 called Cinnamon. What are the advantages of using Ubuntu over the standard Ubuntu? For users who are accustomed to Windows, they may find the layout of the interface very familiar with the start menu, taskbar, and some icons that are pretty close to what Windows has. It may offer the user a sense of comfort and may be easier to find tools and menus. The community link lists down the following features. No need for a powerful computer, run MSI Windows, .exe and .msi applications, supports Android with graphics acceleration, and advanced hardware support image, or AHS. For system requirements, we would need a processor that's at least 2 GHz dual-core processor, 2 gigs of memory, although 4 GHz is re recommended, and 25 gigs of storage drive space. Installing Ubuntu is pretty much the same as installing other Linux distros. By using an ISO image of Ubuntu on a USB drive and booting your computer onto that drive. I'm using an old Dell Vostro 3550 laptop to install. It's got an Intel i3 processor, 8 gigs of RAM, and a 500 gigabyte hard drive, not SSD. As soon as we are in the live ISO, we can kind of play around with the interface before installing, although in a limited fashion. We want to install Ubuntu so we can fully audition it. Click on the install system icon, select the language, location, and time zone, then configure partitions on your disk. My laptop currently has Windows 7 installed. I'll select Erase Disk. Enter the name, the username, and computer name, as well as the password we will be using. Then click Install. It takes a bit of time, and it's showing slides of Windows 11, so it is still running. Now it's done installing. We're going to restart the machine. It says we need to remove the installation medium, then press enter. Enter your username and password, then click enter. We will want to update the install for Ubuntu. So we click on update. So we see here we're using the free version of Power Toys. We will want to update all packages. Enter the password to enable update. Now that all, all the updates are done, you can see what else is there. You can go to Plasma Add-ons, Wallpapers, Global Themes. And here, uh, we can find other software that we would want to install. Here we'll try OBS Studio. Here we have Wine, Wine Development Version, Virtual Machine Manager, which I'm not so familiar. 
Let's try searching for VirtualBox. Now we have the virtual virtual box in the first option. Uh, click install. That should install VirtualBox. Here we also can see uh, OneDrive access, desktop, downloads, documents, pretty much what you would see in your Windows machine. Here we have widgets. We can just drag and drop any widget that you would want to have on your desktop. Let's try calendar. So we'll just drag and drop. Next, we'll try the Applications dashboard. We can go to edit the, the widgets in edit mode. So here we can resize the widgets or relocate them as we would wish on our desktop. That looks better, not too big. Doesn't take up too much space. Now can, we can look at the other apps. We have Android, File Transfer, Chat, ChatGPT, Cheese, Dolphin, Google Chrome, Gparted, Info Center. My laptop's mouse pad has a mind of its own. Sorry about that. So here we also have Microsoft applications, Excel, OneNote, Outlook. Of course, we, we only have the online version. A PowerShell, OBS, which we installed earlier, only Office, uh, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. A Thunderbird Mail, VirtualBox, which we installed earlier, AwayDroid, which I also installed. Webcam, let's see if it works. There goes my mouse pad again, but the webcam works. Bluetooth works also, Wi-Fi works also. I think that's a function of Ubuntu, not Wubuntu. So they are running. Now here's the system information. I have an Intel Core i3, uh, 2.1 gigahertz. Two cores, four threads, eight gigs of RAM, and 500 gigs of storage space. Here we see access to Teams. You can just sign in to enable it. For Windows users who are kind of on the fence on switching to Linux, Ubuntu may just be the push that's needed to consider Linux. Kind of a gateway distro, if you will. Although the free version is somewhat limited in features, I'm not sure if I'd want to pay for it. Isn't there a copyright issue here somewhere? The paid version costs $35. I'm just worried that if the project gets discontinued for some reason, what happens next? So what is Ubuntu? From what I've seen so far, it feels that Ubuntu is more like a theme rather than a distro or a skin. But I do think they did a pretty good job at it. The desktop does feel windowy and familiar. If that is something that's important for you, then you might want to take a look at Ubuntu. That's it for now. I hope you liked the video and it has helped you in a way. Please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.